surface flossing and all these kinds of things. Uh, but that, I'm I'm not the cervical expert, as you know. I'm just the low back geek. <laughs> yeah. Talking of uh, low back ache, uh, you must be having a fair idea about uh, what segments of the population it affects across the world. Largely speaking, would you say it affects the sedentary or it affects active people like policemen and fire workers and stuff like that or everybody? Well, um, you know, I'm, I want your opinion on this because I know your job as well. Um, so let me start and then I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Um, again, the answer is it depends. If we look at older folks who've had a very active life, uh, typically they get the arthritic stenotic spine. And uh, that is their cross to bear as they get older. Um, however, the younger folks now spending more time sitting and sitting in front of the computer uh, are, are ending up with uh, disc bulges. They're becoming the young discogenic uh, generation. And uh, what is so unfair, you might have, uh, you know, a, a, a very uh, slothful kind of person. They just sit all day and that's really what they do. And they'll tell you, we never have any back pain. Right. And uh, it's rather unfair where uh, you and I will go and train for an hour every day and yet we'll get back pain sitting in a chair after 20 minutes. And what happens there is sitting, we've never been able to create any disc bulges or disc damage just from sitting. But if we mimic an hour's training session, if it is done poorly, so you're hinging the disc back and forth, delaminating the collagen of the, of the annulus, uh, then if you, if you keep working the collagen back and forth, then when you sit, it will become painful. But if you never did the training session, you'd be all right. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, people, uh, oh, they're bending their backs, tying their shoes, and, and, and just all day long uh, and not using their hips, then uh, we, we see this, this discogenic kind of back. But now, it, may I ask you for your opinion, you deal with uh, heavy people, right. And I'm assuming some of them are very slothful in that they don't move very much. Would you say they, they don't have many back problems or are they so obese they're crushing themselves? Uh, I would say, again, I can't give you exact numbers, but I would say the incidence of knee pain is probably higher. Uh, but there is probably, I would say, around 80% of them would be having uh, low back pain at some point or the other. And this is as far as the uh, obese patients are concerned. Uh, there are others, uh, you know, patient groups I see who definitely have a higher incidence of uh, low back pain, like uh, post-pregnancy women who have divarication of the recti. I, I don't know if this is uh, scientifically proven. I see that women with totally flabby bellies and the recti are well apart and the whole abdomen bulges out. I ask them, do you have low back pain? They say yes. Every one of them says yes. I haven't seen a single divarication of recti who has said uh, that I don't have low back pain. The same with large incisional hernias. People who have had c-sections and hysterectomies and then have hernias and they're bearing their hernia for a long time, they have low back pain. Probably uh, would have to do with uh, what you say about the role of the uh, abdominal muscles in protecting the lumbar spine. What do you think about that? Uh, well, I'd have to agree. Um, I don't know if you want to particularly talk about uh, the role of muscles and stiffness and stability at this time or not, but is, is that where you're, you're segueing to? Yes. Yeah, well, um, if we can uh, talk about, uh, can I just digress for a, a second and talk about stability and then that will allow me to talk a bit more about the role of the muscles? Yep, sure. Oh, okay, so if we can consider the, the spine as a stack of vertebra, well, just pretend they're a stack of oranges. If you put a load on the top of a stack of oranges, it will just fly apart. So if we attached guy wires to that to each orange 
all around them and tensioned each guy wire to the same tension, that stack of oranges would be able to bear a lot of compressive load. So that's the first role of your torso muscles. You have the abdominals in the front, the back muscles, latissimus dorsi, psoas, quadratus lumborum. They form a beautiful guy wire system and they're tuned with just enough stiffness to allow the spine to bear load so the spine doesn't buckle. Now occasionally it will buckle uh, with, with the motor control air. However, that's the, the first role of, uh, of muscles. Um, the, the second role is that it's, it, our body is a linkage. And, and one of the universal laws of, of movement is that you have to create proximal stiffness in a linkage. So if I'm going to push, if all I used was my pec muscle, and, and I, I used it to flex the arm, my rib cage would also bend away, so I wouldn't be very effective. But if I could stiffen my core, 100% of that muscle act activity across the ball and socket joint is expressed on the distal side. So if I want to run, push, kick, walk, get out of a chair, walk upstairs, you require uh, proximal stiffness, and that's the core. Um, so that's the second role of uh, muscles. Um, the, the, the third is that as uh, if you damage a disc, the disc flattens. And now the joint is sloppy and it has a lot of micro movements. And so you can have a damaged knee. You know, the first test of instability might be a drawer test where you're looking for those micro movements. Well, the spine is the same way. Those muscles, when they contract at a certain stiffness, take the micro movements out and, and, and reduce the pain. And, and there are many other functions. For example, uh, it creates armor for those who, who might get, get, get pushed around a little bit or punched or kicked or, or something like that, say, in, in sport. But uh, anyway, with that little uh, introduction, uh, someone who has a uh, diastasis, as you were describing earlier, now has a perturbation in the guy wires. And as the um, oblique muscles, they create hoop stresses around the core. So when they contract, they pull laterally, they open up the, the diastasis, and you know your rectus has transverse tendons uh, running through it that gives the six-pack look. If that can no longer uh, transmit the hoop stresses, the whole integrity of the guy wire system is compromised. So we're starting to see now uh, how this story is evolving. Those guy wires are critically important for, for, for taking out the micro-movements, allowing the, the spine to bear load, and um, uh, create that proximal stiffness for movement. Otherwise, you're having to move your spine, and uh, the hips won't function properly, that doesn't drive the thigh, etc., etc., and, and, and the, the implications just get transmitted through the, uh, through the linkage. Is, is that an answer that... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, uh, when we uh, deal with uh, patients with large hernias in the center of the belly, uh, if we just put in a mesh, a prosthesis, and prevent the hernia from coming out, it may uh, look as if the hernia is cured, but because we've not done anything to the recti, which are now well apart from the midline, are now bridged over with a mesh, they still don't have a midline strut on which to pull. So the obliques still pull against the recti, but they are not meeting right in the center. So having a linear alba, which is uh, normal in all of us, uh, it's destroyed in these people. So probably that's uh, important to these people from what uh, clinical experience shows, that your belly may look flat because you've got a mesh that prevents your gut from spilling out, but you don't have a single line of uh, collagen against which the obliques and rectus intersect and fire together. Uh, uh, of course, I'm not a spine expert. I'm just uh, talking about a clinical hunch. I mean, uh, you're... you're well, I, I, I think you're absolutely correct. You know, it's, it's so refreshing to hear you describe this because there are some surgeons 
some of the plastic surgeons, for example, when they're uh, reconstructing breasts in, in uh, breast cancer uh, patients, uh, they will take the rectus cut it off at the bottom and roll it up oh, and make yes. a breast and I'm exactly. saying what are you thinking you've just committed them now to a lifetime of back pain you've, you've disrupted the whole guy wire system it's it's crazy yeah. and if that flap sloughs off necrosis you destroyed that uh, guy basically or that woman yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen plenty of those uh, going bad plenty of those going bad anyway yeah. uh, another uh, question